What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and I've waited a long time to make this video. This is our video comparing the Ram 1500 2019 model to the 2019 Ford F-150. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this very biased review towards the Ford F-150. This is our look or a Ford owner's perspective of the Dodge Ram versus the Ford F-150. But before we get started, make sure you are subscribed to our channel because you're going to find an Amazon gift card code just pop up in the middle of this video. And and if you are the very first person to type that code into your Amazon account, you get that free gift card, no strings attached. It's our way of saying thank you for being on the notification squad. How do you join the notification squad? Hit the bell right next to the subscribe button for your chance to win in future videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Before we jump into the features, the benefits, and comparing those two, I want to talk about the trim level. So this is Dodge's Bighorn. This is going to be the XLT equivalent of the Ford F-150. Now keep in mind that these things are very comparably equipped. In fact, the MSRPs of these are very, very similar. In fact, the Ford F-150 happens to have an MSRP of $53,760. The Ram Bighorn, this one stickers for $53,205. So a little side note, that's $555 more equipment. You can't get it much closer than that. When you compare the differences in the bottom line, we actually looked to see what the invoice was, invoice to invoice, the pricing after taxes and all kinds of fees. You're going to be looking at a $1,300 more for the Ford F-150. But remember, we just talked about it, the Ford F-150 has $555 more equipment. And so when you, when you factor that in, you're basically paying $745 more for the Ford than the Ram. Now that blows my mind because I honestly thought that the Ram was thousands upon thousands of dollars less expensive, but you can't find a closer MSRP. And I'm kind of shocked that there's only $745 difference in equipment. Now keep in mind the pricing on this Ram actually includes a $2,000 rebate that's a conquest rebate. Basically they're trying to buy market share from Ford and from Chevrolet. And what they're basically saying is if you own a Ford or Chevrolet right now, don't even have to trade it, but we will give you an extra $2,000 thousand dollars that is factored into all of this pricing there is no caveats to the ford rebates on this particular setup now keep in mind rebates on the ford side are going to be based on where you live and where you title the vehicle not where you buy it from so keep in mind that your state your local area the numbers will be different but 745 dollars apples to apples i was kind of shocked at that so now without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at all the other equipment and compare the side by side 1500 versus the f-150 first up let's walk around both of these vehicles show you what the appearances look like and let's start with the front the ford f-150 has a 2019 is the same thing as an 18 because in 2018 they had a mid-cycle refresh they took the old 15 body style updated it with the front end the rear end and for 2019 they even added in a couple of technology features we're going to talk about later in this video uh, but it is a good looking truck You've, you can see that it's got some nice contours it does look a little um, less new age it almost feels like the ram is trying to look like a brand new style and there's nothing wrong with that i actually kind of like the way that the ram looks like on the front um, and really all the way around the particular vehicle but as you can see they've got the color keyed bumper you've got the color keyed grill with the black inserts um, the, the the headlights are not too fancy now, if you watched our video on the silverado you know I absolutely hate that thing. That thing's a greasy turd. Uh, this is a lot better looking, in my opinion, uh, than that Chevrolet. In fact, I think this front end kind of looks like a Tundra. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think this truck looks like? What other truck do you think it looks like or compares to on the outside of this vehicle? So I want to kind of come around to the side and show you a couple different things. As far as the outside is concerned, um, the, the 1500 badge is kind of neat. It's a neat little spot that they put it in on the hood. I, I kind of like that. Um, one of the things that I do think is that this front fender almost looks bare and kind of naked. Uh, and then the other thing that I pointed out, um, I pointed out a couple different times, that people say, oh, aluminum's cheap and chintzy, cheap and chintzy. I don't know if you can see this, but the, the actual front fender, this is a steel front fender. The aluminum hood, so, the, so Ram still has an aluminum hood, and then they have a steel front front fender but one thing I want to point out to you see how easy that thing is to flex I'm not pressing very hard at all and then if you I don't know I don't know if you can hear that or see how easy it is for the the, the fender to flex the the Ford doesn't really have that same problem let's the, or maybe it does let's let's just take a look at it trying to do the exact same thing you can see you push I'm pushing a lot harder 
on the Ford, you can probably see the truck wiggling before that happens. Um, and, and then you've also, and then once again, this is an aluminum fender. So it's kind of, so yeah, it's flexing, but it's not flexing nearly as hard because I'm, I'm, I'm pushing on it a lot harder than I am on that one. So once again, let's just take a look at it. You can see how much it wiggles and I mean, it's just crazy. And you can actually hear it popping. It's, it's one of those things that kind of proves that ne not necessarily aluminum is a beer can or a tin can, but uh, nonetheless, I do like the style of the Ram. Let's continue walking around on the outside. I don't want to sit here and, and get caught up on one tiny little feature here. Uh, you'll notice that the actual cab of the vehicle is going to be bigger for the 2019 body style. And we're going to take a look at the inside here in just a second, but just kind of notice that. Um, the other thing that I want to point out to you is that I, I do like the way that this rear bed looks like. Um, and I do like the fact that the Ram does give you the option for the 20 inch wheels. I think the wheels look fine i do think that um falcon wild peak tires that sounds like a pretty cheap tire um, especially when you compare that uh, to the good years that you get um, on the the ford f-150 the goodyear wrangler so i think that that was just a way that they tried to save some money now uh, talking about the actual tailgate of the ram uh, one thing that i really do like about the ram is that it does have a soft open on the bighorn which is once again is the xlt equivalent the Ford F-150 doesn't necessarily have that option. You have to step up to the Lariat to get that from the Ford factory. But a quick and simple strut can fix that. Now you'll notice in the bed of the truck, a couple of things I want to point out to you is that this Bighorn does not have any interior, or it's not interior, but any bed lighting like the Ford F-150 XLT has. Uh, on the F-150, there's a simple button right here that'll illuminate the entire bed of the vehicle. And as you can see on this particular model, it's blacked out with a, a couple of black panels. So that tells you you can get it, you just gotta spend more money to get it. So uh, that's a really nice feature that I've personally loved on my F-150. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you on the, the back side of the truck, the tailgate does look a little cheaper to me on the Ram than it does on the 1500 or the F-150. And the reason I say that is because the Ram just has one big emblem or one big tailgate with a bunch of emblems on it. The Ford F-150 actually has the F-150 stamped into the rear tailgate. And I think that looks a little more premium. But once again, it's all about taste. What do you like? What do you want? Now, the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, it does not have the soft open, but then again, it's just as simple as just catching the tailgate. Now, keep in mind that the Ford F-150 tailgate does feel heavier, but it is also torsion assisted. And you do have the ability to go with the tailgate step in the bed of the truck, but I think Ram also happens to have a couple of options to help you get in the bed. Neither one of those trucks are featured with that. This particular F-150 is featured with the FX4 package, which comes with a lot of features like off-road tube shocks, uh, comes with skid plates, uh, hill descent control, a couple of other things. Uh, the Ram just has the normal 4x4, nothing wrong with that. But one of the things I want to point out to you is this rear window. Notice how this rear window is one solid big piece of glass and that it has a hole cut out for that sliding rear window. Now, if you compare that to the Ram over here, this does kind of look like um, a, a cheap kind of out of 1995. It's not nearly as bad as the Silverado. So hear me out on that. But if you notice, you've got one, two, three, four, five pieces of glass all put together. It just looks a little busier. And so if you want a cleaner look on that rear window, uh, you definitely want to go with the Ford F-150 for that. Now, while I'm on the side, I want to point out something else to you. This F-150 happens to have step bars. Absolutely nothing there. That's an easy fix. You can add something aftermarket, but it's something to note considering the MSRPs are almost exactly the same between the two. Now let's do this. Let's talk about some of the features that the Ford F-150 has that the Ram does not. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the tables and say, here's some of the features that the Ram has that the F-150 does not have. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is what Ford is calling their AEB, Automatic Emergency Braking. New for 2019, there's going to be radar sensors built into the front bumper on every single F-150, even if you get a base work truck. I'm talking about roll them up windows. 
<laughs> you get automatic emergency braking. Basically, it's a radar sensor in the front bumper that's looking for the cars ahead of you. And guess what? It's also looking for the pedestrians. It's got pedestrian detection. So if you're going under a certain speed, guess what? The truck will notice that and it can automatically apply the brakes for you even if you're not aware of what's going on there. Now, the nice part is you can turn that off if that kind of feature scares you a little bit. Now, keep in mind the Ram does have a similar technology. As you can see, they've also got the front sensors, but keep in mind that that's not going to be standard equipment on the base models like it is on the Ford F-150. Another feature that the Ford F-150 has, which is probably one of my favorite features, is this right here. Ford calls this their Security Code Keyless Entry System. So basically, you can take the keys to the truck, you can throw them in the truck itself, and let's say if you wanted to go out to the beach, you don't want to have to keep your, your keys on you, you can lock it up, nobody can get in your truck. And if you ever want to get back in it, just type in your personalized code and guess what? Now you can get back into the truck. It's a very cool feature that the Ram simply does not have. Another feature that the Ford has that the Ram simply does not have is what Ford calls their Ford Pass Connect. And basically what that is, is that is a wireless modem built inside of the vehicle where you can connect 10 devices to the Wi-Fi hotspot. It's pretty cool. So if you've got a bunch of kids in the back seat or you're tailgating, you guess what? You can hook up all your iPads, your iPhones to the Wi-Fi, connect, and guess what? You're hooked up to AT&T's Wi-Fi hotspot network system. It's a pretty cool feature. And the way that that's actually built out is you see that little shark fin on top of the roof? Inside of there, you have your satellite radio antenna, but you also happen to have that Wi-Fi hotspot is built into that shark fin. So it's a really cool thing. Now, one downside that Ford does is they still have the old school antenna, the AM, FM sticking out. Uh, it is nice that the Ram has that integrated into the rest of the truck. So if you wanted to go through a car wash, you don't have to. So very, very cool stuff. Next thing I want to talk about is the payload capacity inside the vehicle. This Ford F-150, as you can see right here on the sticker, happens to have roughly 200 pounds more of cargo capacity inside the vehicle. Now, what can 200 pounds mean? It can mean extra bags of mulch, or if you wanted to put one extra motorcycle in the back that weighs 200 pounds, you, I guess you could do that too. But the point there is, is that it, 200 pounds more capacity can go a long way, especially if you're going to be working out of the truck. So just something to note there. And I think one of the reasons that they do that or have that ability is this particular truck happens to have rear leaf springs. And so it has coilovers in the front, or technically they're not coilovers, they're struts and stuff, but this particular truck happens to have a rear leaf spring setup which is going to allow for more weight. Now it does sacrifice the ride very, 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 very slightly compared to the Ram. The Ram actually happens to have a coil spring suspension in the rear. I do not understand that. I understand that it's simply for a better ride quality, but if you're gonna be working out of your truck or towing out of your truck or even lifting it, it makes it a lot easier when you just have the rear leaf spring setup. Me personally, I prefer leaf springs, but depending on your application, the coil spring may be a little bit better for you. Another benefit of those rear leaf springs is the towing capacity. This F-150, if it's properly equipped, can tow up to 13,200 pounds, whereas the Ram can tow up to 12,750 pounds properly equipped. And once again, I think that has to do with the actual rear suspension setup. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is the actual options for your bed. So this Ford F-150 happens to have a five and a half foot bed. And in a Super Crew, you can do a five and a half or six and a half foot bed. Same thing as the Ram. You can do roughly a five and a half foot bed and roughly a six and a half foot bed. But did you know that the Ford F-150 between these two is the only competitor that can offer you an eight foot bed? So if you have to have an eight foot bed for work, you can actually get it in the super cab version of the Ford F-150, not even available in the Dodge Ram. I wanna talk about engines for just a second. And before we do that, I wanna show you one of the things that I personally like about the Ram a little bit more than the F-150. It's not a deal breaker or anything, but notice how the contours of the hood, it has a little dip here. It's almost like saying, hey, stick your hand right here if you wanna open the hood. And it's very, very simple right off the bat to know exactly where that hood latch is to open it up. Now the Ford F-150 is very, very similar. It's just offset just a little bit. And so if you've done it enough like I have, it's pretty easy to find, but for the very first time, it actually may be a little difficult to find it because it's located right here. Let's talk about engines for just a second. The Ford F-150 has five available options as far as engines are concerned. I'm not gonna sit here and try and read them all out loud, but this one is particularly loaded up with the 5.0 V8. 
this one is loaded up with the 5.7 V8. Now keep in mind the Ram does have an upgraded version of the 5.7, which allows for that maximum towing capacity that we just talked about. But keep in mind that you have to pay an astronomical amount of money extra just to have that engine and it's the same engine. It's kind of similar to how they, the Ford F-150 3.5 EcoBoost, and then you have the 3.5 EcoBoost that is in the Limiteds and the Raptor. It's the high output version. It's kind of like a high output version of the 5.7. Let's talk about fuel economy on these two vehicles exactly as they are equipped. The F-150 does have better fuel economy by one mile per gallon in the city and one mile per gallon in the highway. So the Ford F-150 is going to win both ways in that regards. Now keep in mind that the Ford F-150 also happens to have a 3.0 diesel option, which is ironic because Dodge Ram got rid of their diesel option and some would probably say it's probably because that engine in the Ram was so problematic that they just decided to ax it completely. I want to talk about the interior of the Ford F-150 for a second. So Josh, if you want to take a look at that, um, one of the things that you'll notice, this particular F-150 has an optional cat skin premium leather that we've added after the fact. Now keep in mind, for comparison's sake on the pricing that we did earlier, we did not actually factor the cost of the leather. We just did the stock chassis to the stock chassis to try and keep it as fair as possible. But what I want to focus on today is the actual fit and finish of everything else, like the center console, the dashboard. Now one of the things that you will take a look at is the F-150 dashboard does look it doesn't look dated by any means, but it does not look as high tech or as fancy or as flashy as it does in the Ram. Now, one of my favorite features of the Ford F-150, and this is very controversial for a lot of people, uh, a lot of people like their center, the, the column shifter for the, for the transmission. I prefer the actual center console because it's a good place for me to rest my hand while I'm driving. It's just comfortable. But one thing that I absolutely hands down love much more on the F-150 than I do on the Ram is the actual center console and the ability to actually lock it. So if you can see right here, you can open it up and if you wanted to lock it, just put the key in there. If I can actually put the key in there, turn it. Now nobody can get into the center console. You can physically keep people out of the vehicle. Now I want to show you how much room you do have in the center console. It's a massive center console with an actual hanging file folder system. So if you work out of your vehicle, you have the ability to actually keep files on your customers or whatever you're doing out of the truck. You can keep organized in the actual center console. So a very, very cool setup. Now, the other thing that you do happen to have on the F-150, you do have two USB ports, and then you have the heated seats, and you've got a lot of things that, that's really nice, creature comforts, like a household outlet plug. Uh, you have your automatic start-stop, which uh, I, I don't hate it, but I know a lot of people do. A lot of you guys, a lot of our viewers hate that, but uh, it is what it is. It's a nice looking interior. It's simple. It's not extra flashy. It gets the job done. There is one last thing that I want to talk about on the front end or the front seats of this F-150 is the class exclusive trailer backup. Basically what this does is you set up your trailer one time and let's say you're in, um, you're at the lake and you can't back the, the boat up and be in the boat at the exact same time. So if you want to, you can actually get into the, the boat itself. Your wife, who's not very confident in backing up a trailer, can actually get in and steer and back up the trailer without ever touching the steering wheel. So now you've got people that are gonna be driving your truck that are maybe not as confident with a trailer. Now they can back it up so you can focus on the boat that's in the ramp. Now, as far as the rear seat is concerned, we left that front seat exactly where it was just a second ago. I'm six foot three without shoes on. And when you come into the truck, you can see you have an absolute ton of room. Now, once again, that's another thing that the Ram has done a better job in the 2019 models, giving you more space. But nonetheless, you've got plenty of it back here. And you also happen to have the power outlet, a second one back here, and you have two more USBs so everybody can charge their phones all at the exact same time. Good ergonomics as far as location of cup holders, location of cup holders in the rear seat as well. Now, as I show you the rest of the rear seat, it's real simple. You just lift it up and it automatically will hold its position. And as you can see, it completely completely load flat floor, which is one of the things I love about the F-150. And you also have some storage compartment underneath this seat as well. One of the features that I absolutely love about the Ram, but I don't completely understand it, is the push button start. So basically, if you are in the vehicle, put your foot on the brake with the key and hit the start button, the truck will automatically crank up. But the problem with that is, um, is that it's not completely executed all the way out. So let's pretend 
that the truck is locked, right? Well, in a Ford F-150, you have to step up to the Larry to get this, but it not only has the push button start, but it has intelligent access. Meaning that if you walk up with, to the truck and you have the key in your pocket, you have nothing in your hands, if you walk up to the truck to unlock it, it's gonna unlock. And to me, that's the benefit of having a push button start is not having to dig the keys out of your pocket. And so on the Ram, yes, it has push button start, but to get in the truck, you still have to dig the keys out. You still have to come in here and hit the unlock button. So why would they have the actual push button start without making it 100% seamless to get in the vehicle as well? So with that, it's just a kind of a side note that I think it's a half baked product here. I love the push button start, but I wish they would have had the intelligent access. You don't have to dig your keys out. I know it's kind of a first world problem, but there you go. As far as the interior of the truck goes, Ram did a really good job of using fit and finish. As you can see, it's a nice looking dashboard. Uh, the instrument cluster, it, it looks beautiful. The actual center stack looks really, really nice. This is an 8.4 inch touchscreen. Now, I think it looks gorgeous. I love how it's got that high gloss around the actual touchscreen, but I do feel like this touchscreen itself is a little bit clumsy. It's a little, it's not clumsy. It's very fast, it's very responsive. Um, you don't have any problems there, but the problem that I think most people will have, if you are not technologically advanced, you're gonna have a higher learning curve learning this system compared to the Ford F-150. I think the Ford F-150, they learned their lesson on my Ford Touch years ago, and that Sync 3 system is very, it's not basic because it still has plenty of power and it's still, it's got plenty of features, but they execute it to where it's a lot easier to utilize all of those particular options. Now, I do like the fact that you have the ability to adjust your climate right here from the touchscreen. You can do that on the F-150, but once again, you have to step up to the Lariat to do that. You do have your trailer brake controller, your, your um, traction control, tow haul mode. You have your parking sensors in the front and the rear. Uh, all of that is nice and easy to locate. Now, one thing that I I have mixed emotions on is this right here. This is gonna be the shifter for the Ram 1500, and it is a twist dial knob. I know some people say, I gotta have that shifter on the column, and then some people say, I can't stand the floor shifter. I'm curious to know what you guys actually think about the actual, the, the shifter being a twist dial knob. And I'll tell you my biggest, pet peeve with this. I like the fact that it frees up all this area and gives you more room for cargo. We're going to talk about that in a second, but there is a huge safety feature that was missed on this. And that is it, let's say you crank the truck up. Josh, do you mind go ahead and cranking it up for me? So let's say if you crank the truck up in the years past and you've got it in drive, you're driving, you come to a stop and you open the door, the truck is going to leave it in drive. So if you just decide to leave the truck, it's going to keep it in drive and it's not going to automatically put it in park. The Ford Expedition, the Ford Fusion, the new Ford Edge, all of those vehicles also have a twist dial transmission knob, but it has a safety feature built in. So that way, if you come to a stop, you get out of the car, even if you, guess what? The trucks or the vehicle is going to put itself in park automatically. You don't have to do anything. It's an extra safety feature. So that, that is my only pet peeve with this, but I'm curious to know what you guys think about this shifter. Now, keep in mind, you also happen to have all your four wheel drive controls here. You also have your locking rear differential, just like the Ford F-150 has and all the other controls that you're pretty well familiar with. The last couple things I want to showcase to you is the actual cloth seats in this are much softer than the Ford F-150. I believe that this cloth is probably going to soak up some stains a little bit more than the F-150, but it is much more comfortable. So it's kind of a, a give and a take. There's a, there's a benefit to having the softer cloth, but then again, there you go. That's just kind of the, the two completely different cloths. Now, this center console, I do not like it. This is my big, I, I love the interior of the Ram. It's a good vehicle. I cannot stand the center console. And let me show you why. So you've got your cup holders here and you've got your cup holders here in the back as well. There's no big deal there. And this is kind of nice because you can slide this forward and back. The problem is there's absolutely no way to secure your contents in here. Just like we showed you on the F-150 a second ago, if you wanted to, guess what? You can actually reach your hand all the way down in here and grab the stuff from the front there's no way to secure anything. So if you are a law-abiding citizen and you've got your, your pistol in the, in the center console, you might not want to do that in the RAM. You might want to find another place for it. Um, another 
interesting tidbit or a quirk in a feature if you're a Doug DeMira fan is you've actually got a contractor here uh, with a ruler and a whole, you know fractions to decimals. What? I don't know why you would want this, but I mean, kind of a neat feature. And the, the other feature that I do like about this is that it does have the two-tiered setup and you've also got another USB plug right there. But all in all, I hate the lack of security that this center console provides. As far as the rear seat's concerned, as you can see, it's still got a plenty of room for a full-size F-150 or 1500 or whatever pickup you're wanting. And as you can see, same thing, I'm still six foot three, nothing's changed in the last couple minutes. <laughs> it doesn't have nearly as much leg room, but still plenty for a normal full-size adult. Uh, so kind of informa good information there. You also happen to have a couple of different USB options right here, normal USBs, and then also USB BCs on the top. You also happen to have normal household outlet plug. Are you kind of seeing a pattern here? Um, it's kind of neat to see that. Now this particular truck happens to have the same exact setup to lift the rear seats. Just lift it up, you're good to go. Now the other thing I want to point out to you is this. So I just ripped out the, uh, the rubber floor mat so you can see this. This is uh, also a truly load flat floor, which I do like. It's one of my favorite features of the F-150 for a long time, but I love the fact that you have some storage capacity in the actual floorboard. So once again, I'm gonna try and do my best to give credit where credit is due, and that is a pretty slick little setup. So if you wanted to put some ice cold Coca-Colas down here, I guess you could do that. Uh, and then the fact that it's got a removable tray so you can clean it if you need to is a very, very nice setup. So uh, good engineering, I think that's a pretty good win. And there you have it. That is our detailed look comparing the Ford F-150 to the Ram 1500. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other suggestions, please let us know because this video actually came out of your comments. So you guys saw that Silverado video and you said, do the Ram, do the Ram, do the Ram. And we've been waiting a long time. And once again, huge thanks to Bobby Coleman at SEA Performance for lending us this Ram for us to review for you guys. Once again, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you can win the future Amazon gift cards that we are going to be giving away. And if you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, Mitchell S. Watts. Things right there on the screen. Do all this other kind of stuff that everybody asks you to do and have a great day. I cut it just in time seeing. <laughs> Squeak! Uh, Custer, uh, um, Conquest, okay, and can automatically apply, 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 apply the brakes, can automatically apply the blade, and it can automatically apply, <laughs> and there you have it, that is our detail, <laughs> blah, 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 now the Ram actually stickers for 50, th Mother, whoa. maybe it's not going to be a good day. <laughs>